Alrighty, Chicos and Chicas, welcome back to a special edition of the Drive Thru, sponsored by Mark's Bagels. Go into Mark's and get yourself an everything bagel with smoked salmon and cream cheese. Alright, today we're going to start out with a couple of always, sometimes, never questions. Can we get a little zoom action, Mr. Euland? Awesome. Okay, so we're going to start out with number one. If two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. That is always. Where is that? Okay, so the way we can look at this is we'll draw the room that we're standing in right now. <laughs> My perfect example. Okay, so <laughs> we've got, where's the highlighter? Yeah, I'd love the highlighter. Okay, so we've got this line, and we'll say it's parallel to this line. And then we also know that this line right here, no, that wasn't a change. This line right here is also parallel to this line. And because the two lines are parallel to each other, we know that the third line is also parallel to it. Good. I'm going back to All right. Back to Sounds good. The next one. If a line is parallel to two different planes, then those planes are parallel to each other. Sometimes. So, we're going to draw the room once again. This time it'll be a little bit better. So, we're going to take highlighter. We're going to take this plane. And we're also going to take this plane. That was not the right color. And we're going to take this plane. So now we know that this line going right through it, right up. No, that's wrong. Hold on. Oh, my bad. Okay, so we're okay. So what we have is we're going to take this line right here. And this line is parallel to this plane, to this plane, <laughs> and it is also parallel to this plane, but these planes intersect each other, so this is sometimes. Yeah, All right. Next question. Three parallel lines are coplanar. That is a big, fat some, sometimes. Let's scroll down here. We're going to draw our handy dandy little room again. I'll show you two examples, one that works and one that doesn't work. So, this line uh, where's the highlighter? This line right here is parallel to this line. And as we said before, it's also parallel to this line but they are not coplanar because three parallel lines do not necessarily determine a sec uh, plane. But if we go down to my another example with my handy dandy little classroom over here, you can see that this... Yeah, I am. But we're going to work from this right now. We're going to say this line is parallel to this line but now you have to imagine a line that goes right through your ceiling, like, like a vent. You've got a big old vent. And you know that said vent is also parallel to all three of them. So because we have two examples that work, and one, or we could, because we have one example that works and one that doesn't, we know the answer is sometimes. All right, now for the last one. It is possible for two lines to intersect at one point. Two planes to intersect at one point. Never. Let's go right on down and draw another classroom. <laughs> okay. So here is this plane. We'll take the ceiling plane and then we'll take the sidewall plane. Close to Sarah Wertheim. Give me a shout, Sarah. All right. So, this does not intersect at one line, and or it doesn't intersect at one point. It intersects at an entire line right there. 
All right. Very good. Next page. Next page. Flip the packets. Okay. Let's start this one. How many planes are determined by a set of four non-coplanar points if no three of the points are collinear? How many planes are determined? Okay, so we're going to do three points and you're going to imagine a triangular prism. You can see your one plane, one plane, two planes, the base plane, you might not be able to see it, but it goes all the way down here, and your fourth plane, which is that front side. So, four. At a given point on a line, how many lines can be drawn perpendicular to the given line? The answer is infinitely many. So, we're just going to draw a random line. Here's our point. It can come in from, imagine it's coming in right at me, so right out, and then you could also have it come this way, or this way, or that way, infinitely many. It's hard to draw circles in a two-dimensional world. Okay, last one. At a given point on, pl on, plane, on a plane, how many lines can be drawn perpendicular to the plane? So we've got here, there's our line, and then there's our point. You can only draw one because other or because otherwise it would not be perpendicular to where's the eraser? There we go. Because otherwise it would not be perpendicular to the plane if it came in at this angle and then went down like that. That would be like a hundred and thirty and fifty. There we go. And so the answer for that is one, and then that is my infinity, if that looks like an infinity sign to you. I'm going to turn it over to my boy Luke. All right, boys and girls, welcome to the drive through part two. Miss Yule, can I get a little zoom action, please? Thank you. Uh, let's go to our pen. Wow, that was a little too much. Um... <laughs> So we'll start out by writing our uh, T-chart, statements, and reasons. So we are given that, I'll just do the squiggly to speed it up. We are given that BDC is an isosceles triangle with the congruent sides of BD and CD, so we'll mark that up right here and here. And right given, oh my god. And then we're also given that ADB is congruent to ADC. So we know this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. And we'll win my point here because it's a little hard to see. So you see this right here is congruent to there. And this right here is congruent. So we see that the two triangles here are sharing AD. So that's congruent by reflexive. Yeah. Uh, so reflexive, and then we can now say that A D B there we go. A D B is congruent to A D C. Alright. And now we can say the triangle A D B is congruent to triangle A. D, C. Now, um, that's a good idea. Uh, by S, S, A, S. And now we can say B, A, right here, is congruent to A, C, by C, P, C, T, C. And then here, because we can say that BAC is an isosceles triangle, because uh, by definition of isosceles, and when you look at the definition, it says two or more congruent sides. And so we've shown that BA is congruent to AC, which are two or sides. So we can write it down here. All right, that's our last question, boys and girls. Can I get a boom? Boom! Yeah.